Hi everyone, I am Brittany the Cosmic Lunar Soul. Welcome to my channel or welcome back if you are a subscriber. I am starting this series off, my Green Glyph series off, with a flip through of the Lenormand deck. So let me pull this out of the box set. If you're curious about this box set, um, make sure you check out the overview and that'll kind of give you an idea of everything. So this is the Green Glyphs Lenormand deck. This is by James R. Eads. This is a 41 card deck and includes a fully colored 80 page guidebook. So I'm starting with the Lenormand because this is actually what the box set is created off of. Back in 2019, this is what James R. Eads created. His He did a Kickstarter on this and decided to create a fully encompassing divination set based off of the Lenormen. So this comes in a really bright, so this is actually like a mustardy kind of color, but it's lovely. It's very gorgeous. And you can see the foiling all throughout the box. Um, this has a magnetic flip tab box. So it opens kind of like a book. And then on the inside, you can see more of that design. This print, this style should be very familiar if you saw my Prisma Visions and Cosma Visions mini flip throughs. So it says here, there are many paths that have led you here and there are many paths that lead away from here. May these cards recall the paths you have traveled. May they illuminate the paths that need guidance and may they reveal that there are some paths better left unknown. So it says James R. Eads. Let's talk about the guidebook and then we will get into the cards. So I mentioned in my overview video that there is a giant glossary, which is this here that includes all of the guidebooks from all of the decks. Um, but if you decide to only purchase or kickstart the Lenormand deck, it does come with a fully illustrated, fully colored uh, guidebook that includes its own table of contents you know guys you know i love that and then starts off with a note from james so just um in general it goes through note from james so welcome to lenormand at first glance reading in pairs Le lenormand poetry reading triplets um and so forth so this is actually my first foray into lenormand so this is Kind of scary but exciting but i'm experiencing it with you guys um this goes into the art of reading lenormand and it says that while it shares some qualities with tarot card readings it at its heart is a system of familiar symbolism so one of the things that i've noticed i mean i have buddies that do lenormand obviously um I say obviously like you guys know my life <laughs> but um they are reminiscent to playing cards there are familiar playing card symbols on lenormand cards so what i um like about this is that as a new lenormand reader it does include like an introduction to lenormand um it explains that Lenormand is at its heart an oracle deck. I feel like to me that takes some of the scariness away because I do read oracle. So it's like relying on something familiar, but maybe a little more structured than oracle, but less structured than tarot. I do think this is a very appreciative, uh, appreciated section of the book. It explains why there are playing cards inset on the Lenormand cards. Where did Lenormand come from? Why are these 36 cards? What are they? How is it different than tarot? I think that's really important is how, how a lot of people get confused how tarot, oracle, and Lenormand intersect or don't intersect. So I like that. And then it says, why did these cards have numbers? And then it goes into the first glance of the card. It explains the breakdown of how the cards are set up. Obviously, you'll see more of that when we do our flip through, but it does go through the name of the card, number on the card, so forth, so forth. The structure of the book is very, very beginner friendly. So what it does is it takes you through the steps of adding more and more. So that way it doesn't overload you at first. You know, if you've seen my flip throughs of tarot, 
you know that it just kind of assumes you get the basic gist of tarot to some degree and we'll just say here's your three card readings here's your you know celtic cross and good luck <laughs> so i like that this starts off with pairs and then it explains that it's going to go through you know as you practice more and more it's going to build you up to the point that you can go into triplets and so forth and um i think that is actually really understated so it goes into reading triplets, chaining and mirroring, and it just has all of this information uh, all in one guidebook. So let's skip ahead and look at the uh, actual cards, or the actual card meanings as laid out in the book. So let's just go ahead and look at Clover just because it's here. So we have the number of the card, the name of the card, the energy, whether it is positive, negative, or neutral. And then where it fits into the grand tableau, how it affects the grand tableau. And then it gives a lot of keywords. And then here, it even gives example combinations. So it, as you're learning these combinations, you can start to relate to them. But they also throw in how to interpret, interpret some of them in the actual guidebook. And I think that's really cool. Oh, and I forgot to mention that the symbols are also included at the top of the page. So that way you can start to get familiar with them, which also means you can actually use this book since it's fully encompassing of the card other than the actual like image of the card. You can use this sort of in a bibliomancy kind of setup. All right, let's go ahead and do the flip through of the cards and then we'll talk about the card stock images, blah, blah, blah. flip through I mentioned in my overview that the cards are foiled has this lovely holographic foiling here are the backs of the cards um, actually all of the cards in the entire set have the same backs that way you can turn them into like a mega deck which is really awesome it has like a I would say this is what I would call like a smooth matte finish maybe off mat is that a thing <laughs> um so the new decks tend to be a little sticky but um i think that means this would actually fan out very well if you were the type of person to fan but the card stock is these cards are smaller so that means it doesn't need to be quite as thick but even then it has a great card stock nice strong fan if you have any of other the, any of the other decks by James R. Eads, you know that their card stock is really, really nice. So overhand shuffling, quite lovely, 
quite lovely. I have tiny little hands, so this to me is just amazing. It's so lightweight, so easy to shuffle, and I don't feel like I have to squeeze it to death in order to get a nice shuffle going. So if you're an overhand shuffler, that works really well. Traditionally with small decks though, it's hard to do a rifle and a bridge. So let's see if we can do it. Okay, it rifled and bridged, I will say was a little tough. You have to have a little bit of grip strength there. Um, but the cardstock made it very easy to do regardless. Since they're small, it might be harder to bridge, a little easier to, to rifle. But I will say that due to the type, I've never had cardstock in this size, but I feel like it will take to a bend regardless, just based off of my experience with other cardstocks. So uh, if you're okay with that, then you're okay with that. I know I am, but just to let you know. So if you are a fanner, fans out amazing doesn't need much breaking in to get a nice fan going um let's talk about the images on the card so i'm just going to kind of pick out a few things here so the cards kind of have a few different variety of things that that we saw during the flip through the important thing that james did in creation of all of these decks is the incorporation of color so for instance if you have a card with a lot of yellow then they're happy moments if you have a card where the main focus is maybe red or orange then maybe it's really relaying some challenges so i checked to see what other color um correspondences there might be in this deck uh, or just in, in the box set in general. And it doesn't really say, but it does mention explicitly oranges and reds tend to cor correlate to challenges or issues that are happening while yellows and golds are more so of like happiness and joy that are coming in or, you know, are, are being displayed. So for other colors such as green, I believe there's like some some blue cards that are in there i think that is up to you to decide how you want to incorporate that into your reading and i like that he leaves some room for interpretation but as someone who is very uh type a very engineer brain i like to sometimes just be told what to do <laughs> and what to think so um i would have liked that as well to have more of like a color-coded system to explain what the different colors mean in 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 the guidebook but i thought these cards were quite lovely and it makes me excited to try out the uh rune deck which i am going to do next so if you're curious about that go ahead and check out the rune uh video or if you didn't get to see the unboxing of the box set go ahead and check that out and otherwise let me know if you read lenormand are you excited about this um about this kickstarter uh if so comment below and let me know if you enjoyed this video give me a like uh hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you don't miss out on the other decks in this series and i will catch you in the next one bye guys